Hi, welcome back. Or if you're just joining, my name is Maya, and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm focused on Hermes scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. It's that time of the year again when some of next season's silk and cashmere scarves are cropping up here and there on Hermes websites. Be sure to check out my last video on the collection if you haven't seen it already. In this video, I'll continue my coverage of the new Hermes Spring Summer 2023 scarf designs I've seen and talk about what we know of them so far. Let's get started. This design is by one of my favorite Hermes artists, Annie Febvre, who has been working with House for decades. It's inspired by the landscapes around a village in the south of France called Collioure, where in the early 20th century, Henri Matisse, André Derain, and others established the first of the avant-garde movements that flourished in France and would later become known as Fauvism. The Fauve painters were the first to break with Impressionism, as well as older, traditional methods of perception. Their spontaneous, often subjective response to nature was expressed in bold, undisguised brushstrokes and high-keyed vibrant colors directly from the tube. The name Les Fauves, or the Wild Animals, was coined by the critic Louis Vaucel when he saw the work of Matisse and Derain in an exhibition, the Salon d'Auton in Paris in 1905. Often seen as a seminal and transitional movement in the development of modernist art, Fauvism paved the way for other highly influential styles of the 20th century. Durand, for example, went on to develop a neoclassical style, while the once Fauvist painter Georges Braque worked alongside Pablo Picasso to develop Cubism. Available in at least four delicate colorways, this is one of those formats that gives a lot of bang for the buck, given that you gain two versions in a single scarf. I'm sure there will be more colorways to come. Let's see what the season brings. This next one is inspired by Greek mythology and the story of Amphitrite, who was one of the Nereids, who was walking along the island of Naxos with her sisters. Poseidon was captivated by her dancing, but initially she refused his offer of marriage and took refuge with Atlas, the giant. It was a dolphin sent by Poseidon who finally persuaded her to return and become queen of the seas. Poseidon then rewarded the dolphin by making it a constellation. In works of art, Amphitrite was often represented either enthroned beside Poseidon or driving with him in a chariot drawn by seahorses or other sea creatures. In this composition of abstract geometric shapes, Julia Abadi recounts to us her dream. Available in at least three colorways, all with contrast hems at this point, there will surely be more to come. This next one comes to us from Ugo Bienvenu, and so far, no backstory available on Hermes.com that I've been able to find, but we can speculate on what is clearly a date, or rendezvous galant. Stylistically, Bienvenu again draws on his signature space comic book aesthetic, which we've seen in other designs for the Hallas. The pair is dressed in a style that's both futuristic and old-fashioned, in my mind, both have a very Spanish feel to me, while the horses definitely sport space derby-esque like armor. What is he saying to her? She's walking away from him, yet looking back. Is it coyly, flirtatiously, angrily? It's up to the viewer to interpret. And by the way, the man and woman are not the only ones potentially on a date here. If you look closely, you can see other pairs. Birds, monkeys, and even reptiles drawn on the background. Now, I've seen this in six colorways so far, so guessing we may get one or two more, 
but this is probably pretty close to what will be available for the season. This design is by Cyril Yatkin, who first came to the house doing on-the-spot, quick-take portraits. Les Petits Papiers d'Hermès is a random scatter of illustrated catalogs from the Émile Hermès collection that have torn each other to shreds. Each vying for our attention, we can catch glimpses of numbered horse bits, girths, bridles, flinkers, and drawbars. If you're interested, and apologies if I mispronounce this, jigiri is a traditional Japanese art form using hand-torn paper to create collages which may resemble watercolor drawings. This technique dates from the Heian period of Japanese history when it was used often in conjunction with calligraphy. Handmade paper is essential for the creation of jigiri images. So far, I've seen this in at least three colorways, all with contrast hems, and I am very much looking forward to seeing what other options they will offer in this design. This one is particularly interesting and attributed to Philippe Dumas, former CEO of the house. This design is one of optical illusions borrowed from old engravings. It's only by using a cylindrical mirror that you can see images from the distorted perspectives. The word anamorphosis is derived from the Greek word meaning to transform. Anamorphosis is an optical illusion whereby an image appears to be totally distorted when seen from the usual vantage point, but appears normal when viewed from a specific angle, perspective anamorphosis, or indirectly in a mirror, mirror anamorphosis, as in the case with the scarf. Perspective anamorphosis first emerged in the art world during the Renaissance, while mirror anamorphosis was developed in the 17th century. Historically, it was Italian painter and mathematician Piero della Francisca who laid the groundwork for the application of optical illusion. If I counted correctly, this design has 21 points of mirror anamorphosis, and there is a reflective piece included with the scarf that, if you form a cylinder with it, you can see the image as it should be. The two in the center are obvious. There's the scarf title and the Duke carriage and groom. Other than that, remains to be seen. I've seen this one in at least three colorways, and I'm sure there will be more. Here is a detailed version of one of the scarves I covered last week, the 90 centimeter of the same name, but with some key differences. First, at 70 centimeters, it's obviously a smaller format. Second, it only features one horse bust versus the 16. And third, stylistically, it's done in a pointillé or dotted fashion. Pointillé is a decorative technique in which patterns are formed on a surface by means of punched dots. The technique is similar to embossing or engraving, but is done manually and does not cut into the surface being decorated. Pointillé was commonly used to decorate metallic arms and armor starting in the 15th century. And then beginning in the 17th century, it was also used for intricate binding of handmade book covers and decoration of hand-finished firearms. Obviously, with the scarf, the dotted look is achieved with color variations versus punched dots. Although, Hermes did issue a studded scarf not that long ago, so I guess it wouldn't be a stretch to see this technique somehow incorporated in a metallic way in the future. Anyways, I've only seen this design in one colorway so far, so we'll see what else the season brings as far as options.
Here in the 70 centimeter scarf, they combined the signature styles of Robert Dallet and Gianpaolo Pagni with Dallet's classic jungle love design, which has been reissued many times over in multiple formats, and Pagny's stamped approach. The oldest use of a tool resembling a stamp is an application that commonly didn't use ink, the seal. Today, seals, usually in wax, are used mostly for decorative purposes, but for millennia, they were critical for verifying the authenticity of products, correspondence, and official documents. The use of seals is referred to in the Bible's Old Testament, and archaeologists have found surviving examples of seals pressed into clay that even date back all the way to ancient Mesopotamia, that's 5000 to 3500 BC. These seals would have been carved out of materials such as stone or bone. Some surviving examples are shaped like long tubes with holes down the center, presumably so they could be worn. When it comes to something that we today would recognize as stamping, the earliest surviving examples come from Asia and long before the invention of the printing press and movable type in Europe. These ancient tools were part of a process called wood block printing, and they look very much like wood versions of modern rubber stamps. A craftsman would carve an image into the surface of a wood block, which would then be inked and applied to fabric or paper to create an image. The oldest known complete woodblock printed book is the Diamond Sutra, a Buddhist scroll found in China that is dated to 868 AD and is now in the custody of the British Library. The Diamond Sutra was created by woodblock printing on seven different pieces that were then combined to complete the five meter long scroll. I could go on about the history. It is so fascinating, but I will spare you and save that for another time. Now, the scarf I've seen in at least four colorways, and they all seem to have contrast hems at this point. Hopefully, we'll see the rest of the color options soon. So there you have it. More of the spring-summer 2023 scarves from Hermes that are starting to appear on their websites. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, nut tutorials, and more. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time.